All right, guys, I started off this morning kind of lazy. I just started putting some stickers on the front of my toolbox here. Um, but I'm going to get started to uh, clean up the engine here, uh, get it all pressure washed off. There's a bunch of grease and grime all over it. So once I do that, I'll start taking everything off that I um, pretty much don't need and um, start to reseal the engine. I do have new valve cover gaskets here, um, some new exhaust gaskets. But don't have to worry about that today. Some camshaft seal gaskets, a new uh, boot for the transmission for the shifter fork, or I say the clutch fork, because that was uh, just completely missing. I have an OE throwout bearing that was discontinued. I was able to find it at a Toyota dealership. And uh, of course, some other good old Toyota parts like oil filters, some fippage, and uh, yeah, I'm going to start to reseal pretty much everything. I have rear main seal, front crank seal, all that stuff. But I have to first degrease the engine, get everything cleaned up nicely, and go from there. And this video, I'm going to try to do more like a tutorial so you guys can see everything that you can do on here and how simple it actually is to be able to replace all these components. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to remove the AC compressor from the vehicle like kind of permanently because the AC wasn't working and I cannot seem to find an AC compressor for this vehicle at all. Um, I can find the compressor itself, but the clutch you cannot get with them and I'm pretty sure this clutch is bad. So um, will not have AC and I guess I'll just have to live with that for now. I'll just have natural AC roll down the windows. Noticed this intake manifold has a freeze plug in it, and I'm not exactly sure why they did that from factory. Uh, I did, of course, um, pull out of all the injectors when I pulled the engine, but I also pulled the cold start injector. Have them all in a bag here, ready to go to get cleaned up. Um, of course, did ultrasonic them, um, and they're all nice and clean, but I still have to get them like flow tested, rebuilt, everything like that. But um, did get the belts pulled off. Belts are pretty simple. You just kind of loosen this nut and then you can drop uh, or pretty much loosen that and this whole thing just slides up and down and uh, loosens that for the uh, AC compressor belt. But everything's pretty simple on this. So I'm going to break out the pressure washer now and um, get started with cleaning the sucker up. One thing I actually will do first before I do that is actually pull these uh, plug wires and uh, Pull this little valley cover gasket and stuff like that so I can also pressure wash down the valley there. Now you can see why I need to clean down in there. It's uh, pretty disgusting. Previous owner said he had done the valve cover gaskets and I'm pretty sure he was lying to me because everything tells me that there was a bunch of leaks coming from the valve covers leaking right onto the exhaust there, especially considering there's an actual pool of oil down there.
start with some of the easier stuff, pulling the uh, cam cover off and probably water pump pulley. have an impact what you can do is pretty much reassemble everything with the belt um, put the alternator back on all of that put the belt on get it real tight and then you can just use the ratchet kind of break everything loose because the belt being on the crank pulley you acts as a resistance so you can break all of these loose I just realized I don't have a pulley puller to get the crank pulley off so I'm gonna start with uh, probably the intake manifold now this thankfully is just a 12 millimeter to get all these bolts off. manifold here there's this bracket that holds it pretty much up it's not necessarily needed I've taken them off of pretty much all of my cars I'm probably gonna do it on this one as well there's just a 14 down here the 12 up here four 12s across the bottom that hold the intake manifold and then the five across the top pretty easy to get to pretty easy to get to once the engine's out the intake manifold is all of the bolts are pretty much the same length and there's just two nuts that you should kind of be able to point out that they go on the two studs there those are some pretty tiny runners I mean this is like my knuckle my finger fingernail these are pretty, pretty tiny runners. Uh, I'm guessing that's why they added the Tevis system, but I'm not sure. All right, so this is Toyota's Tevis system. So pretty much this connects to the intake manifold, closes these runners, so they kind of actuate similar, very, very similar to a butterfly valve, like a throttle body. Um, this pulls vacuum from the intake manifold to shut it, idle and at lower speeds to help pretty much create more pressure and um, just allow kind of a kind of like if you were sucking through a straw type um, type of thing where it creates more air to get into the cylinders and then at higher rpms it opens up to be able to allow all of the air to be able to get in we were staying in Paris to get away from your parents and i thought wow if i could take this in a shot right now i don't think that we could work this out out on the terrace i don't know if it's fair but i thought how could i let you fall by yourself well i'm wasted with someone else if we go down then we go down together they'll say you could do anything they'll say that i was clever if we Let's show them we are better. Let's show them we are better. We're staying in Paris. Cigarette posing 
pictures of yourself on the internet out on the terrace. We breathe in the air of a small town on our own cut and dash with the thrill of it. Getting drunk on the past we were living in. If we go down, then we go down together. They'll say you could do anything. They'll say that I was clever. All right, I'm gonna start by removing the crank pulley here. I have this pulley remover tool that hopefully should get the job done. If for some reason it doesn't, I do have a slide hammer as well that should get the job done. have to be pressed on so I'm gonna have a fun time with that. Another thing you're gonna want to do while you have the crank pulley off is make sure this keyway is good. Make sure it's not completely stripped or the keys broken off or anything like that because that can definitely cause some issues with timing and um, you'll probably more, most likely need a new crankshaft. Time to finish removing the rest of the timing cover here. I'm going to rotate the engine over to top dead center and since I don't have a crank bolt to be able to rotate the engine I'm just going to use the cams. side quest here um, as a friend had come over and managed to find that my exhaust manifold has got a nice beautiful crack in it so I've got to figure out something for this be able to replace either this or uh, make a tubular one something to fix it but that I can't have So something I just realized, this tensioner pulley bolt is a 12 point, not even a six point. That is really weird. I wonder why Toyota would have done that. See so here that the uh, cam seal on that side was leaking. This was starting to, and just leaking all down the face of the block. And of course, the front main was leaking as well, right there. Since there's a bunch of oil piled up. All right, I'm gonna make this a stopping point in this video. I've got quite a bit done on the engine, got it all degreased, um, got 
crank pull you removed, stuff like that. And there's a bunch more I need to clean up on the face of it. As you can clearly tell, of course, with the leaking seals, I wasn't able to clean back behind the timing cover, but um, I'll get that all taken care of in the next video. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, share, comment down below your thoughts. I hope this is kind of giving you guys an idea of how to work on the 4AGE a bit and um, the steps you need to do to be able to properly work on it. But just remember, don't quit on a body that won't quit.